All right, welcome to Unit 4 on Probability Random Variables and Probability Distributions. In this video, we are going to tackle Topic 4.12, the Geometric Distribution. And yes, this is the final topic of Unit 4. It's like the never-ending unit. just keeps going and going. Definitely the biggest unit of the entire year. So let's just jump right into the geometric distribution. All right, so first is, you know, what is a geometric random variable? Well, for a sequence of independent trials, a geometric random variable X gives the number of the trial on which the first success occurs. Each trial has two possible outcomes, success or failure, with the probability of success being P and the probability of failure being one minus P. So the most important thing here, the two things that are underlined, these have to be independent trials, which was true for the binomial random variable as well. What happens on each trial? Um, has to be independent, cannot affect the next one or anyone's coming or prior, right? And the other thing that makes this different, this is definitely different than the binomial model, is because here the random variable is simply when we get our first success, what trial our first success occurs on. Remember, the binomial model was defined based on two things, hence binomial. It was um, dependent on n, how many trials you had, and X was how many successes within those trials. So if you had five trials, then you could have zero successes, one, two, three, four, or five. Well, geometric is very, very different. Geometric is simply looking on what trial is your first success. Doesn't care about anything else. And that's it. When is your first success? After you get that first success, you're done. So let's look at a quick example here. You are playing a simple game where if you roll a fair six-sided die and a six lands face up, you win. Otherwise, you lose. Let X be the geometric random variable for how many times you will play the game until your first success. So remember, this is a geometric situation because every toss of the die is independent. Remember, a die doesn't have a brain that says, oh, I just rolled a two. Um, I'm not going to roll a two again. Oh, I rolled a four now. Oh, I like even numbers. Well, I'm going to roll a six next. No, it's not a die. It's a die, right? It doesn't have a brain. It doesn't think. It's independent. Every time you toss it, every probability is equally likely. One six for any side. And again, it's completely random, right? Definitely independent. And we have the probability of success. Now, it did say we only win the game if a six lands up. So that's one six. There's a chance that I win is one sixth. And failure would be anything else, which would be five six. So even though there are six sides to the die, six different outcomes, I'm only looking at success, six, I win, failure, everything else. So here the sample space for the random variable X, which is a geometric random variable in this video, is when that first success happens. So the first possibility is one. Maybe it happens on the very first success. The very first roll of that die, I win, awesome, great, done, got my first success. Or maybe I have to roll the die twice, which means the first was a failure, second a success. Or, or maybe the first success is on the third trial. So the first two were failures, and then the third was a success. And the sample space is actually never ending. It goes infinitely because, you know, maybe maybe the first success is on the 11th toss. So that means the first 10 were all failures and then the 11th was the first success. Um, you know, this, I put dot, dot, dot here because technically you could even go up to, right, <coughs> a thousand. And that, I mean, that would be very unlikely that you don't ever get a six in 999 tosses, but on the 1,000 tosses, your first success. And again, that would be very unlikely, but at the same time, I guess it would be possible. So now let's try to fill in the probabilities here. Let's talk about finding probabilities of a geometric random variable, because all random variables have outcomes and attached to those outcomes are probabilities. So once again, um, let's face this same situation where we're trying to get X to represent the first win. Now, obviously, you have to play the game at least once to win, right? So a binomial model, you could have zero successes. You could have five trials and never win. But in a geometric, you have to get that first success. You can't have zero as a possibility here. So it always starts with one. So what's the probability that I win on the very first toss? Well, that's win right away. Win is one-sixth. 1, 6 is approximately 0.167. Done. Easy problem. All right, what's the probability that my first, again, always emphasizing the first win, the first win is on the second toss. 
Well, that means that the first toss had have been a loss, L. And then the second was my win. So that's five, six for the L times one, six for the win. And that is um, five over 36 or 0.139. Obviously using your calculator could help you find these uh, percents or these decimals a little faster. All right, and then the third success would be two losses followed by a win. And I could use an exponent to make that a little bit faster to write. Five, six squared, so five, six, five, six, two straight losses, and then they win, the one, six on the third. Four would be lose, 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 win. That's be five, six, the third times one, six. Um, maybe I have to wait to the fifth toss to get my first win. Four straight losses and then my win. And then maybe I got to get the six, the six tosses, the first win, five straight losses. And again, I can keep going seven, eight, nine, ten. It never really never ends, to be quite honest. Um, but then I just put up a generic X. You know, if I just said, hey, what's the probability that my first win is on the X trial? Um, well, that would be five, six to the X minus one, because if I wanted to be on the X trial, that means I had X minus one failures or losses leading up to that. And then finally, I had that win, that one six on the final um, toss here. So just a real quick thing is here is, you know, why are we allowed to multiply these probabilities? Like in each of these trials and each of these outcomes, I'm multiplying probabilities. Well, remember, you're allowed to multiply when you're working with independent events. So these are obviously independent events. Rolling a die is independent of the next. So that's why I'm allowed to multiply. Another thing I kind of pointed out here was notice that this is a skewed right distribution. Um, it starts off with the most likely outcome is actually getting that win right away, about 16.7%. And then as I move to the right, the outcomes get um, the probabilities, excuse me, get lower and lower and lower. So like I mentioned earlier, you know, what's the probability that I have to wait till the 1,000th toss to get my first win? That would be possible, but that is going to be dang near 0%, right? It's probably going to be 0 .0000000000 because that would be 5, 6 to the 999, 999 straight failures followed by that one success. And that's just going to be very unlikely. So we do see that skewed right distribution here. Now, this is a generic way to talk about the probability. So essentially here, um, we have our failures, right? And you have X minus one failures. If you want that first success to be on the X trial, you must add X minus one failures leading up to it, and then followed by that one occurrence of your success, okay? So here is that official definition for the probability. The probability that the first success for repeated independent trials with probability of success P occurs on trial X is calculated to be this. So remember, capital X is our random variable of, hey, when can I get my first success? And little lowercase x is an, an actual example, like, hey, I want it to happen on the third trial. Well, that would be two failures, one minus P to the second, three minus one is two, and then followed by that success, okay? This is called the geometric probability distribution function, because this is a function where you could plug um, the, the number you're looking for in, I could plug in five, I want my first success on the fifth trial, and as long as I know the probability of success P, I could plug that in and I can get my answer. So this is a probability distribution function, geometric, because X represents when do you get that first success. All right, now all random variables do have a mean that represents the average value of that random variable, if it were repeated over and over again, right? We have talked several times in this unit about the mean of a random variable. Um, if it's a discrete random variable, you could easily find the mean by multiplying each outcome by its probability. If it's a um, continuous random variable, then sometimes you have to be given what that mean is. But regardless, every random variable has a mean, which means if you were to repeat that scenario over and over and over again, the mean is on average, what's the value of that random variable? So in this situation, it's saying, hey, we're looking for that first win. What is the average number of times I have to play the game to get that first win, okay? So it could happen on the first trial, could happen on the second, third, fourth, right? Technically, we said it goes all the way up. And we can't just multiply outcomes by probabilities because there are technically infinite outcomes. But there's actually a simple formula to find the mean here. It's quite easy. It's one divided by P. That's it. One divided by your probability of success will tell you the average number of trials until you get that first success, if you were to repeat it over and over and over again. But of course, what trial that first success occurs on is gonna vary, right? Just because you expect it to happen on, say, the sixth um, 
trial doesn't mean it can't happen earlier or it can't happen later. You know, I mean, maybe we maybe we do get that first win on the first roll of the die, or maybe it's just for whatever reason, randomness, we have to wait till the eighth to get that first success. So there is a standard deviation here as well. Slightly more complicated formula, but still fairly easy. Square root of one minus P on top. One minus P would be your probability of failure. <coughs> Excuse me, divided by the probability of success P. All right, so let's talk about what those values would be for our dice game here. So remember the probability of success is one six. So the mean would be one divided by one six. And when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, fun algebra stuff there, and you just get six. Now that, that actually should make complete sense. We have a one out of six chance to win on any toss of the die. So it would make complete sense that we would expect, theoretically, we would expect to get our first win on this by the sixth play of the game, right? On average, we would expect to get that first win by the sixth play of the game. Obviously, it could happen sooner though, right? I mean, for example, the most likely outcome is it happens on the very first toss. So um, that is why there is a standard deviation. And the standard deviation is quite large, 5.477. And that is because, again, it's much more likely to happen sooner, but we would certainly expect it to happen by the sixth trial. And again, an expectation is exactly the same as a mean. And the other idea is that it could go past six. It could go seven, eight, nine, but that would get more and more and more unlikely. Um, so this is, again, the geometric distribution, and you could find a mean and a standard deviation for this. Um, please do not think that it would remotely be normal by any means. I'm only bringing that up because so many kids think, oh, distribution's normal, right? Well, not all of them. We showed you that this is actually probably skewed right, where early outcomes, one, two, three, four, are fairly likely. <clears throat> but, you know, as this infinitely goes on, it would be very, very unlikely for those extreme values to the far right to occur. All right, so let's look at another example here. Let's completely change the scenario up. So Frank is playing a slot machine at a casino. Um, the casino claims that each play of the game is independent of the next and that a player has a 23% chance to get a return, which means win money on any play. Who knows how much they win? Maybe you hit the jackpot for a million dollars or maybe only win 50 cents. But they do say you have a 23% chance to get a return of some kind on any given play. So a slot machine, you, you pull the handle, Things spin, who knows, there's all different kinds of slot machines out there that do all different kinds of fancy stuff, but at the end of everything spinning, you're either going to win or you're going to lose. And this does say we have a 23% chance to get a return on any given play. So we have two questions to start off with. What is the probability that Frank gets his first win on the fifth play of the game? So his first win is on the exact fifth play of the game. Second question is a little bit more tricky. What is the probability that Frank's first win comes after the third play? So let's take a look at these two answers here. So the answer to part A is actually really, really simple. We're just using our formula very, very deliberately. So what's the probability that it actually happens on the very or on the fifth play of the game? So that would mean that we have four straight failures. Five minus one is four. So four straight failures. So 0 0.77, 0 0.77, 0 0.77, 0 0.77, which is a little bit faster, right, with exponents. And then finally followed by that success, 23%, 0.23 on that fifth trial. So you're literally walking through it, four straight failures, and then that um, uh, fifth is the first success. So 0 0.081, so about an 8% chance that Frank has to wait around until the fifth play of the game to get his first success. Uh, next question is a little bit tricky. And there's actually two ways to solve, and I hope that they make a lot of sense. So what is the probability that Frank's first win comes after the third play? So what does that mean? So we're looking for the probability that his first win is greater than three, anywhere after the third game. So this simply means that he does not win on the first game. He does not win on the second game, and he does not win on the third game. So what we need to do is we take one minus all of those. Because actually, if you think about it, if I want that first win to happen after the third play, that means the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, the twelfth, the thirteenth, dot, 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 forever. And I can't sit here and add probabilities that go on towards infinity. But what I can do is think about what I don't want. I don't want it to happen on the first play which is the 0.23 right here. I don't want it to happen on the second play, which would be a one failure, then a success. So that's the second play right there. And I don't want it to happen on the third play. So that would be two failures and then my success there. 
So if I figure out what the probabilities are for those three scenarios, first win on the very first play, or the second play, or the third play, figure out those probabilities, add them together, but then I have to subtract from one, because remember, those are what I don't want. I don't want that. I want it to happen after the third. So it'd be one minus all of that, which would be one minus 0.543467, and I get 0.456533. So it was very, very likely, almost about a 46% chance that his first win will occur after the third play. But there's actually a second way to do this that for some kids makes a lot of sense and other kids, it, the math is easier, but they still have a hard time contemplating and understanding this. So the, the other option to solve this is, hey, just think about it. After the third game, Frank wants to get his first win after the third game. That simply tells me that the first three games must all be losses. After that, who cares? All I know is if he's looking for his first win to come after the third play of the game, the first play has to be a loss, 0.77. The second play has to be a loss, 0.77. And the third play has to be a loss, 0.77. That's it. Who cares about what happens after that? I don't care if he loses five more times and then gets a win or only loses one more time and then gets a win. None of that matters to me because I don't really care. I just need the first three to all be losses, 0.77 to the third. And notice I get that same final answer, 0.456533, right away. Obviously much easier math, but for some kids a little bit harder to con you know, to kind of you know, really comprehend what's happening there. All right, two more questions here for you. Same involving the same scenario with Frank at the casino here. Um, what is the probability he gets his first win on or before the fourth play? And how many times would he expect to play the game to get his first win? So again, that's an expectation is the mean. So let's talk about that first question there. What is the probability he gets his first win on or before the fourth play? All right, so we're looking for the probability that that random variable X, when is his first win going to be? We want it to happen less than or equal to four, on the fourth or before the fourth. So I actually have to calculate each of these. So here is it happening on the fourth, three failures, then the win. Here is it happening on the third play, two failures, and then a win. Here is it happening on the second play, one failure, then the win. Or we go all the way down to, hey, he gets his win right away on the very first try. No failures at all. Bingo, win right away, 0.23. So find each of those probabilities separately. Add them all together. You could type it all into your calculator as well. The calculator will do order of operations correctly as long as you use the parentheses there. And we get the answer of 0.648. So there's actually a really high chance, about a 65% chance, that Frank will get his first win on or before the fourth play. So the last two questions, C and B, you got to be really careful with the wording of what they're looking for and how you're going to answer it. And the final question here is, of course, looking for the mean. It doesn't say mean, but it does say the expected value. And that's exactly what a mean is. How many times would he expect to play the game to get his first win? And remember, the formula for the mean is quite simple. Just one divided by the probability of success, 0.23. So we get 4.348. And a lot of kids say, well, you can't play the game 4.348 times. I know that, guys. It's, it's, it's a mean. It's just like LeBron James is never going to score 27.2 points a game. That's just his mean. He can only score 27 or 28 or 19 or 18 or 35 or who knows. It's just an average, right? So what this is saying is that if Frank were to play this slot machine many, many, many times, and he's going to keep playing until he gets his first win, and he's going to write down how many plays it took, and he's going to do it again, he's going to do it again, he's going to do it again. Sometimes it might happen on the very first play. Sometimes he might have to wait till the eighth play. But the average number of plays until he gets that first win is 4.348. Okay. All right. That's it for the geometric model. It is the final topic of unit four. And it's actually a fairly easy topic, really not too difficult at all. Just make sure you know what you're looking for. How do you recognize a problem is geometric? Because we do have independent events with success and fail. And we're looking for the first success. And that's it. Very different than the binomial model. I mean, obviously there's some similarities there. We got success, we got failure, we need independent trials. But remember with binomial, you're given a set number of trials, and then you're looking for how many successes within that number of trials. Where geometric just wants you to get that first win and that's it. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully it made a lot of sense and we're done with unit four.